Whiteness, right, is under threat. The demographic shifts, the country isn't, all of these racially ambiguous children on Cheerios commercials. People are losing it on live TV at truly unprecedented rates. Now it's time for another live TV meltdown because this woke professor just melted down on live TV. Take a listen to this clip of Eddie Glaude Jr., a Princeton professor who was on MSNBC with Stephanie Rule and had this explanation for Trump's victory. There's this sense, right, that whiteness right, is under threat. The demographic shifts, the country isn't what all of these racially ambiguous children on Cheerios commercials are confusing the hell out of me. Hey, right? a lot of people voted because their life's too damn expensive. And it, and it was here and it they was- They voted for, you're telling me, Stephanie, that all of these people who believe that their lives are, that bread is too high and eggs are too high, that they voted for a convicted felon, a guy who said we can grab the pea. I think that a lot- They of voted people, for I, this listen, guy. I'm not defending it. But I think there are tons of people that don't pay attention to, and I'm not defending it, don't pay attention to politics at all. But we, while we live in the most prosperous country in the world, people are saying, life's not fair, I'm not doing well, my son's still living in the basement, I can't seem to get a job, I don't like the status quo, I'm voting for something else, and he was I the love you to I life, love you. Oh. but I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that. And the reason I think you believe it is because you don't want to believe that that's what's really motivating them. It's always the case. We, people don't want to believe what the country actually is, because if they believe it, they're going to have to confront what's in them. I don't believe that. They voted for a crook, a person who they know is stealing from just doing everything to undermine the so-called country that they love. And then they're telling us the BS that it's economics. We know that's not true. The so-called country? Is he saying America's not a legitimate country now? I mean, look, you know you've absolutely lost the plot when you've gone so mad, so woke, so left-wing on MSNBC that the host has to talk you down and try to talk some sense into you. But this whole rant is just absolutely insane from top to bottom. Firstly, if your explanation for why Trump won boils down to people wanting to preserve whiteness, that's going to totally fail to explain why such an increasing share of minority voters, especially Hispanic people, voted for him. It's obviously not all about race whatsoever, especially considering because a huge chunk of white people voted for Kamala. The gap has far more to do with divides in education and class than it does with race. But left-wing academics really only seem capable of viewing our society through this one-dimensional, identity-obsessed lens. And what is he on about, about Cheerios commercials with multiracial children? Nobody, except maybe five people in Alabama, gives two hoots about that. You have to be pretty detached from actual Trump voters or just the broader American public to think that that kind of thing is a driving issue for people these days. And then his whole rant about people not actually caring about the economy or the cost of living, even though that's like one of the top things they say they care about, is totally missing the mark. He brings up a bunch of completely irrelevant and unrelated stuff, like Trump being a felon, which only refers to bookkeeping offenses by a highly partisan New York DA that are potentially going to be overturned anyway, and old comments he made that are really gross about grabbing women. But what does that have to do with the economy? Like the math is not mathing. If people remember correctly that the economy was strong and their life was affordable when he was president last time and they want to go back to that, they're overlooking the many personal flaws this man has and the many, I think, suspect pet things in his past and baggage and comments he's made. They're overlooking that and saying they care more about the actual things affecting their family, making them struggle to feed their family and put food on the table. What one has to do with another, I just don't see. And he's really telling this woke MSNBC host that she's just in denial because she doesn't want to admit how fundamentally evil and racist America is. And that they all just want to, we all just want to preserve whiteness is why minority voters increasingly backed Trump. Bruh. 
You know, there's a saying, and I can't remember it exactly, but it goes something like, some ideas are so crazy, only an intellectual could believe them. And when I see professors from America's most prestigious, at least supposedly, institutions like Princeton coming on national television and having these kinds of hysterical meltdowns that are just totally detached from reality, I'm more convinced than ever by the truth of that statement. Meanwhile, over on CNN, a former Kamala official just floated the craziest and most offensive feminist idea that I've ever heard. Take a listen to this clip. He is looking for That is my question. I'll start with you. Joe Biden has been a phenomenal president. He's lived up to so many of the promises he's made. There's one promise left that he could fulfill, being a transitional figure. He could resign the presidency in the next 30 days, make Kamala Harris the president of the United States. Whoa. He would absolve wow. her <laughs> from being able to, ha to, from having to oversee the January 6th transition, right, of, of, her, of her own defeat. And it would make sure that uh, it would dominate the news at a point where Democrats have to learn drama and transparency and doing things <laughs> that the public want to see is the time. This is the moment for us to change the entire is, perspective of how Democrats Okay, operate. this has now jumped from an internet meme to a Sunday morning show. Jamal's out here right now. This season of House of and, Cards. <laughs> <laughs> I thought but you were going to say, what about the Supreme Court? That's also out there. Well, the Supreme Court might happen. I don't know if it will. Wow. This is the most pathetic suggestion I've heard on cable news in a while. And that's saying something. I love this. Biden should resign the presidency, not because he's mentally invalid and feeble and walks around looking like he doesn't know where he is half the time. They don't care about that. But progressive commentators want him to resign the presidency so that he can make Kamala Harris the president for a couple days symbolically to shatter the glass ceiling or whatever. But at the same time, and even though they picked her specifically because she was a woman as vice president, if you dare say Kamala's ascent had anything to do with DEI, that is so racist and offensive. Personally, I have no problem whatsoever with having a woman president. To me, it makes no difference either way, whether a presidential candidate is male or female. But I think it would be so incredibly condescending to women to be basically give a pity presidency to a failed presidential candidate in order to shatter that glass ceiling for women. Like, don't you maybe think the first woman president should be someone who actually earns the presidency? I don't know. I want to hear from the women in my audience. Like, do you support this or do you find this as insulting as it seems to me from obviously an outsider's perspective? Like if I was Kamala, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want a pity appointment to be a token footnote in history just for my identity or whatever. After I massively failed to succeed on my own merits, both as a presidential candidate in 2020 and then as a major nominee in 2024. If the Democrats did go down this route, and I am skeptical that they actually will, but it's wild to see high level people on that side suggesting this seriously, non-ironically, not as a joke, then it would totally embody their move away from meritocracy and towards toxic identity politics and tokenism that the American people have overwhelmingly rejected. They would be learning the exact opposite of the lesson they should be internalizing right now and reminding us of everything that's wrong with the modern Democratic Party. But other than that, go for it, I guess. <laughs> What do you guys think of this crazy idea and of the MSNBC segment we talked about? Do let me know in the comments and do hit that like button while you're at it. Uh,